Well, hey, everybody. Welcome. Y'all, I feel like we have spent our entire Tuesday together. (laughs) But anyway, we're back. Welcome back to the podcast, My View on the View, a podcast all about ABC's The View, where I make the views table relatable. We got a major update about Whoopi. Come on in. Let's get started. Come on. Well, guys, ABC News has spoken. About 20 minutes ago, we got a a statement from ABC News President, Mrs. Kim Gottwin, Kimberly, excuse me, Gottwin, I'm going to read it to you verbatim. She uh, posted this on Twitter, effective immediately, I am suspending Whoopi Goldberg for two weeks for her wrong and hurtful comments. While Whoopi has apologized, I've asked her to take time to reflect and learn about the impact of her comments. The entire ABC News organization stands in solidarity with our Jewish colleagues, friends, family, and communities, close quote. So now let me give you my view on The View. Um, This was appropriate when Whoopi was on Stephen Colbert's show on Monday night, January 31st, 2022. If you'll recall, one of the things she said is, I brought this on myself. Okay. now I'm assuming that when she was on his show Monday night, uh, having made the the ridiculous comments, the ignorant comments Monday morning, I'm assuming that she did not know they were going to take this type of disciplinary action. But it's possible that she did know, you know, we didn't learn it until Tuesday night, but it's possible she knew, you know, earlier than that. Or maybe she didn't. Okay, that part, maybe we'll, we'll never know. Um, but one of the things I want to encourage all of us is this, uh, and is this, if Whoopi can say, I brought all of this on myself, let us not go around saying she didn't deserve this. This is them mistreating her. She didn't do anything wrong. If she could say, I brought this on myself. I hope that all of us who love and support Whoopi, who love and support this show can display enough emotional maturity to see she was right. She did bring this on herself. Listen, in our homes, we can say whatever. In our homes, we can, you know, some people say do whatever. But when we are someone's employee, we have to follow their rules. And Disney has an anti-hate, anti-racism, anti-bigotry, anti-Semitic policy. Okay? I don't believe Whoopi is anti-Semitic. She explained her thought processes on Stephen Colbert. All I can do is take what the woman said. I don't agree with what she said, but I, I do respect, as we talk about here all the time, that a part of emotional maturity is understanding and accepting that other people have a right to see any issue the way they want. And if we say, oh, I hate you because you don't see it the way I see it, they don't have the problem we do, okay? So as far as I'm concerned, she deserved this. She brought it on herself. And that's pretty much the bottom line, y'all. You know, I think a lot of people seem to um, forget the climate we're in. Not just literally, you know, but the social climate. That a lot of companies, yes, they want to make money. And for some companies, that's all that matters. But we're seeing a strong shift, especially in the era of Me Too, especially a couple of summers ago with the murder of George Floyd, where you see a lot of companies taking a moral stand and saying, we are not going to support, donate to, put on our platform, someone who's going to express certain types of views and ideas. You can have them. You just can't have them over here. And I think that's what Whoopi forgot. You know, um, the very fact that Whoopi has been on this show, in my view on The View, I'm saying this part, the fact that she's been on the show now 14, 15 years, and they've had, as we've discussed before, y'all, millions, and I'm exaggerating, but just it's just been umpteenth conversations about the Holocaust, and she's never 
ever said anything like that. She was always supportive, never gave a clue to the audience that she held a, a different view about the Holocaust. Okay. I think, you know, that was a time in her career when she had just come out of being blackballed for seven years. We've heard her give the interviews where she went through all of her savings uh, because she has supported her family for many, many years, which I don't understand that. Grown folks are to get their own job and be in their own house. But hey, you know, folks do what they do. Different strokes for different folks. Okay. It was Barbara Walters. She credits Barbara Walters for kind of bringing her back into the public light because Barbara called her up and said, do you want a job on this show? And Whoopi has told us, she said, the first thing I said to her, you do know I've been blackballed because she said, I didn't want to, I didn't you know, know if she knew and I didn't want her to hire me not knowing that. So she said she was honest with her and Barbara said, Hey, come on anyway. And so she credits the show with turning her career around after being blackballed. And the bottom line here is that Whoopi just got too comfortable. She got too comfortable. Many years can discuss the Holocaust and somehow have enough self-discipline to not let the world know what you really thought. But as the years have gone on, as we've talked about here in my, uh, in the community, Whoopi has gotten her work ethic, in my opinion, in my view on the view has just gone down, down, down. And this was way before her health issues, you know, because we always have people. Remember what I said? You know, we always have people that want to blame situations on other things. Well, it was her health. Listen, how can we say that it's someone's health? Um, that's causing their work ethic to decline when their work ethic was declining way before they got sick. You see, those two things don't go together, you know? So for me, I really hope that she takes these two weeks and seriously makes a decision. Honey, do you want this job or not? Because one of the things I've said to y'all is one of the problems I have, although I love Whoopi and I have a certain amount of respect for her, um, one of the problems I've had as a viewer for, for a couple of years now is I feel like she just doesn't prepare for the shows anymore. She's so busy with all her other projects. And guys, we're, listen, we're all one person. Even when you're rich and you have assistants and all of that, you're still just one person. And, you know, the assistants aren't in the movie. She is. They're not the ones doing all the interviews. She is. They're not the ones having to travel here or there to this festival. That she is. And when we try to do a thousand things and have a thousand things on our plate, something is going to suffer. Very often it's our health, it's our self-care, and our work. And see, this job I think she thinks is so easy, she can just sit there and just wing it. And as I've said, when Whoopi tries to wing it because she doesn't prepare for the shows appropriately, it comes through. Very often, as I've said, and I know it sounds very mean, but listen, I have to tell you what I really think. What's the point of you coming here if you're going to get a bunch of fluff and crap? No, my view on the view. I'm telling you what I think here. Very often, she her points don't make sense. Very often, you know, as you know, it's incoherent. It's like, hey, Whoopi, what, what are we talking about here? That could be a result of being extremely tired. That could be a result of jet lag. Even though she has a fear of flying, she has overcome that fear. And she has been flying a lot more in the last many years. So it could be a result of, yes, she's taking steroids because of her sciatica issue and all the health issues she's had. So, of course, we know medications affect us all differently. But if we're going to be 66 years old and try to work and travel like we're 33 years old, listen, we're not accepting the truth of the matter. Okay, so I think a lot has gone into why her work ethic on this show has declined. And we can clearly see that. Now, if you're kind of in and out of the show, maybe you don't see that. But for those of us who are consistent viewers of the show or even consistent, consistent listeners of the podcast, we can see a difference in how Whoopi was versus how she is. And it's not a dig on her. It's just something that we can all say, listen, all of us can get too comfortable on our jobs to where we think we're, we're, we've got a, we, we develop a God complex. Well, I've been at this job for 15 years. I can come into, I can come in late. 
you know, I can stay to lunch over an hour. I can do this. And then when your boss or my boss issues some consequences, not cancel culture, but consequences, we get offended and say, oh, they're picking on me. No, we've gotten comfortable and we've forgotten. We don't own the business. We work for the business. Okay. So as I end, I will say this. I hope this will be all she needs to understand that on this show, yes, you're getting paid to give your opinion. But if your opinion is going to bring heat on your employer and, and, and it's going to just create, all, you know, we just have to learn that maybe this is something I shouldn't say. And that's something I'm working on. That's something I know a lot of you who are emotionally mature uh, individuals you're working on too. Remember, I've said for years here, we all have to learn how to serve our opinions on China versus a trash can lid. And sometimes we have to just say, well, I just won't serve that opinion because it's not going to do any good in, in, in the long run, run, or it's going to be cause a lot of damage. Maybe I can tell my husband, guys listening, maybe you can tell your wife, maybe you can tell your best friend, but you might not want to get on a international show that has over 3.6 million viewers and say the Holocaust wasn't about race. No, for her, it wasn't about race. She's made that clear. But for the Nazis, it was about race. OK, and so that is the bottom line. So, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I don't expect for us to get another update. Um, I think she'll probably come back in these two weeks and they'll just roll on. You know, um, maybe they'll have her say something to us when she returns. Maybe, hey, these two weeks off have really given me clarity of thought. You know, I don't know. Or maybe not. Maybe she'll just come back and just roll on. Um, but this was needed. They needed to send a message to Whoopi. We, we have expectations here. And although we love you and we value you as an employee, you know, and we don't want to fire you, so don't make us, okay? But you got to learn, honey. You know, you've had many chances here with a lot of these things you said here about Bill Cosby, about, y'all remember that time she said rape, you know, there's rape and then there's rape, rape, you know, all this kind of stuff she said. I think this new president is just trying to make sure everyone's treated the same. She did an investigation on Meghan McCain, which forced her to quit, right? And, and now she's suspending Whoopi. And this is not just sending a message to Whoopi, y'all. This is sending a message to Joy, to Sonny, to Anna, to Sarah, to whoever the next host is going to be, that this truly is a new sheriff in town. And just because, you know, you, you know, you, you, you're all that doesn't mean you can't be, you know, disciplined like the next person. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys so much. Listen, if you enjoyed the podcast, don't forget to show me that by giving me a thumbs up. Listen, I love the thumbs downs too. <laughs> yes. Okay. So guys, I enjoy you so much. Listen, let's just, let's just hope that this is all that she'll need. Okay. All right, guys, I'll talk to you later. This is my view on the view, a podcast all about ABC's The View. I'll talk to you later. Bye.